This is chapter three, respiratory, and we're going to talk about some allergic rhinitis treatments and comparing them. So we're going to compare the intranasal corticosteroid. Uh, this is we'll use generic fluticasone. There are some other ones, uh, budesonide and so forth. Uh, this one has brand Flonase, so its companion for asthma would be Flovent uh, for the brand name. And then you also see Claris spray, and I'm assuming the same manufacturers who make Claritin make this because the box looks just like a Claritin box except it's got a nasal spray on the front. But it's tricky because this is a nasal steroid rather than uh, what we're used to which is the loratadine and that's why I used uh, both of those on here so that you can know that Claritin is this loratadine, uh, the second generation antihistamine, and Clarispray is not loratadine but fluticasone and that's a brand line extension uh, it's quite common where a brand name has so much presence that they in some way incorporate it uh, in another condition uh, so they can get those sales as well uh, the leukotriene inhibitor that's montelukast or brand singular because you only have to give it once a day so a single dose to help the patient get air uh, and this is for asthma, but also helps with allergic rhinitis, especially the congestion part that the antihistamines don't work with. So usually when you're going to use one of these, it's going to be with an antihistamine. Then the antihistamines will take one first generation antihistamine, diphenhydramine, which you know is Benadryl. And again, if you forget what Benadryl is for, you can see that drying. So dry someone up who's uh, sneezing or got runny nose. And then the ratadine, we remember the adidine stem, reminds us that it's a second generation antihistamine, and this is brand Claritin. And like the other slides, we're going to compare these uh, drug classes, and we have four uh, to work with. So here's our practice question one, our drug classes. A seasonal allergic rhinitis, SAR patient, asks you which medicine works best for allergy season, which is two weeks away. You say, and the quote, the choices are A, intranasal glucocorticoid, B, leukotriene inhibitor, C, first generation oral antihistamine, and D, second generation oral antihistamine. It's an intranasal glucocorticoid because that provides the best symptomatic relief. A leukotriene inhibitor, it helps, but it's not as effective as an intranasal steroid. A first generation oral antihistamine no, we really wouldn't want to use something that has this drowsiness side effect if we've got something that doesn't cause that drowsiness. And the second generation oral antihistamine, this doesn't cause drowsiness, but it's just not as effective as the intranasal steroid. So uh, we'll stick with this same scenario and the seasonal allergic rhinitis sufferer a couple weeks before the season starts, the allergy season starts, and now we talk about the drugs themselves. In the same position, fluticasone, which provides that best symptomatic relief, montelukast, which is the leukotriene inhibitor, and again, we remember that the leukas tells us that's leukotriene inhibitor, and it's just not as effective as an intranasal steroid. Diphenhydramine, we're not gonna use something that causes drowsiness when we don't have to. And then loratadine, again, the adidine stem, reminds us it's a second generation antihistamine. That's just not as effective as an intranasal steroid. So now we want to make B correct. How, what can we do that makes Montelukas unique that it can do that the other three can't? So I've changed it to an asthmatic patient with seasonal allergic rhinitis would benefit most from which medication. Now fluticasone, as an intranasal preparation, not the inhaled one. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky and I'm not sure how the board exams handle this because the board exams have kind of switched to generic names only. But if you have fluticasone, you in some way have to indicate that is it the fluticasone that's Flonase, which is for the nose? Is it Flovent, where you're using it for an asthmatic? Uh, in the beginning, we said, okay, well, this is Flonase or this is Clarispray. It's an intranasal steroid, so this wouldn't help with asthma. But if it was Flovent, then, yeah, it would have been a great drug that uh, you use as, uh, after albuterol maybe doesn't work and you need to add something. Uh, fluticasone as Flovent 
the spray uh, would be something you use. Montelukist, uh, this is both for asthma and seasonal allergic rhinitis, so this would be the correct answer. Diphenhydramine, it only helps with the symptoms of allergic rhinitis and really doesn't help with the congestion at all. And same thing with loratadine, it only helps with the allergic rhinitis, uh, wouldn't help with uh, the asthma. And even the drying effects of diphenhydramine uh, might make asthma a little bit worse. Okay, so how do we make C correct? Well, we've got to get a little bit clever here. And again, this is just an exercise. It's just a way to make you do something creative. Uh, one of my students uh, said, uh, you know, I just tend to use a different part of my brain sometimes with uh, the you know, challenges you have. And, and so this is where we have a seasonal allergic rhinitis patient, so same thing, uh, complains of nosebleeds, which uh, is epistaxis, with inhaled glucocorticoids and insomnia. Which medication or which medicine could treat both? And all we're doing is saying, all right, well, which of these would cause an adverse effect with the nosebleed, and that would be the fluticasone, and which one makes people drowsy, and that's the diphenhydramine, and the Montelukas and Loratadine don't. Again, we're just trying to flex our you know, our creative muscles and think, okay, well, why do I pick clinically one over the other? Okay. And then how can I make loratadine uh, the correct one? Well, a seasonal allergic rhinitis patient complains of nosebleeds, epistaxis with inhaled glucocorticoids with no concomitant conditions. What do you recommend? Well, the fluticasone is the cause of the nosebleed, so we're not going to do something like that. The Montelukast, we could add that to the antihistamine to take care of the congestion. I didn't really tell you what symptoms the patient has, but if the patient has congestion and serious congestion is part of the allergic rhinitis, then uh, certainly we could add Montelukast to loratadine. Uh, the diphenhydramine, it's unnecessary somnolence or unnecessary sleepiness or unnecessary sedation, whatever word you want to use for that. And then loratadine, sure. Uh, it's second line after the inhaled steroids, but if in some way uh, the inhaled steroid is something that you know, hurts the patient with these nosebleeds, then uh, it would be a great choice.